Now this is the Blackfire multi-tool and I have already reviewed this in a separate video and I will put that in the description box. But unfortunately, this tool has been discontinued and that is a very sad thing because it kind of filled a very unique role in the budget realm. So the question is, well, what happened and what can fill the gap? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, I don't know, it was about a month ago or so, I did a video on budget multi-tools and two of the three tools that I talked about are now out of the budget or discontinued in this case. So we're gonna have to revisit a under 40 budget multi-tool video of things that I recommend. So we're gonna talk about some of those today, but we're also gonna talk about this tool specifically. I think this is worth finding and picking up before they are completely unavailable. There is absolutely nothing out there like it. The only tool that was similar is the Klein tool. Now I've taken it apart because this plier head is eventually going to be modified into a different frame. And uh, they look very similar, don't they? That's because Blackfire is actually a subsidiary of Klein. I found this out only recently which makes it very interesting that they were unable to find a market for this tool. In some ways, I haven't seen anything like it. Um, it has one of the biggest cutter sections that you can imagine. And frankly, it's really, really well done. And I've talked about this a bit, but maybe it's just because the average consumer is not a heavy user. I, I don't know what the problem is, but my guess is it has to do with a lack of marketing in the right places. I wanna talk about marketing a little later, but first let's talk about budget tools in general. This filled a very specific niche in that in the budget market under 40. And this was like 25 bucks when I reviewed it, which is pretty amazing. Under 30 though is the big thing. And this had not only had those incredible pliers, it also had a, a Flipping style ball detent, bit exchanger on one side, which is pretty cool. Now, non-locking, which I talked about, but still quite good. It had a one-handable blade. It had a really surprisingly decent um, cross-cut and single-cut file. A dedicated Robeson, which I always felt was interesting. And, of course, a, you know, bottle opener flathead. But for the price, it was kind of in a league of its own. Now, in that budget video... I did forget a very important tool. So we, we do have some other potential budget offerings in the heavy duty range, but this is at this point, I think the only thing under 40 that we can really talk about. And it's kind of lacking in some features, but on the flip side, it, it does have um, wire cutters, a locking jaw, which makes it rather unique. I think this one you can get still for around 15 to $20 and about the same for the long nose variants. Now these are basically just locking pliers with multifunctional implementation, including a bit driver and a blade. I've talked about these in the past as well, but I don't know if they fulfill the same role that the Blackfire did. And it's kind of a shame to see it go. It is my hope that this tool was not discontinued because it was bad or they're, that they're rather going to bring back a even better variant of it. Maybe with a locking bit holder, that would be pretty epic. Maybe with a slightly better tool set. I don't know, but I caution them for getting rid of this entirely because it really, there's nothing else out there. Um, and this, it kind of comes down to the plier head. How big is this plier head? That's, basically the wave plier head. So give you uh, give yourself an idea of how hefty this thing is. And let me pull out the, uh, uh, where is it? Dual force here since we have it. This thing is big, okay? It, it actually is almost the same length as the dual force and is actually thicker than the dual force. That, that's how hefty we're talking about. It, as, with the size that this is, a lot of the drawbacks of this plier head, like a, basically a standard multi-tool plier head, basically become a moot point because it eventually exceeds the strength that any 
anybody can apply with just their hands, right? That you're getting to that point where it's it's no longer as much of a compromise. And I that's why I, I'm so sad to see this go. I think there's a group of people out there that really could benefit from having this as a backup or in a toolkit like in a car or otherwise where you might not want to store a full-sized lineman's plier but actually gives you a lot of functionality it even came with a, a decent sheath for use as well i just i just sad to see this tool go for sure and i don't think anything else like we've talked about these these tools in the past i don't think in any way they can replace the blackfire so i don't want to go on too much further we're going to have to address budget tools again because of the shift in availability but if you're interested in this tool there are still a couple of places to get it reasonably i will try as best i can to put those links down in the description i think there's only one place on amazon you can get them but they come with a flashlight but there are other websites that still have them in stock now the last thing i just want to say is talking about marketing I hear a lot, especially when I when I critique Leatherman about having a marketing budget. And I don't buy it. And I don't buy it for a number of reasons. There are two forms of marketing that you can do as a company, even if you're a new company, that cost very, very little and have massive returns. The first one is quite obvious. You have a new tool like this Blackfire. You associate, say you, you take 5% of the production and you send those models out to a whole bunch of reviewers on YouTube and other social media platforms that can give you coverage. Now, let's say you send out 200 of these and three-fourths of them make videos or three-fourths of them review them in any capacity. And let's say 60% are positive and 40% are negative overall it still ends up making people aware of the existence of this tool. And the truth is nobody knew about it for the most part. There's only a couple of people that have even covered this implement on YouTube in the first place. And it's a very, very low cost, high benefit endeavor. If you send out products like this, which probably cost about $10 to make. Yeah, they're selling, they were originally selling for 40. Let's say they're, they cost $10 to make you're probably making a hundred times that investment from a single reviewer posting something about it so that people are aware of it. It's a huge mistake not to at least take that step. And that doesn't require any individual within a company to manage that kind of exposure. The second thing anybody can do, especially the bigger companies like Leatherman, Gerber, Victorinox, and SOG, is to utilize hype machines and by that i'm talking about the same strategies that are used by video game companies and electronics companies and it's a proven strategy what you do is you purposefully leak either incomplete or blurry or you know just just images and videos that give people the impression that something new is coming but you don't say anything about it. And you allow people like me to have the enjoyment factor of speculating and so on. And the best part about it is if you don't say anything specific and you change the tool after the fact, you you know, there's, you know, no one can complain because you never committed to anything. It's a non-committal kind of marketing. And it's so, so easy. For instance, the Leatherman that we've talked about recently that could come out because of the pads we've seen that were applied in Australia. I'll put a picture of that. I'm the only one who brought it up. This patent has been around for over a year though, and it would have been very easy for Leatherman to release some images, videos over the last year that could let people know it's coming. Why does that make any sense? Well, in the meantime, a person has to might choose to purchase, say, a, a Dual Force, or a Flash MT, or the new Victorinox one-handed tool, but because they saw that Leatherman was coming out with something that they might be more interested in, they're gonna save their money, potentially, and buy Leatherman instead of these other companies. 
It's just logic, okay? And it costs almost nothing to do this. And it brings us back to the Blackfire. If you have a new product and you're a smaller company, assess 5% of your budget and start sending these out to reviewers in their respective fields, depending on whatever the product's uh, best uh, exposure is, okay? And consider dropping some hints also along the way. If you're the kind of company that's already big but producing a new, you know, a new product in a different genre, that's another great thing to do. It's like Tesla making a phone. All the speculation around that device is going to guarantee its sales even if it's garbage. The same thing can be applied for almost any product that's out there. And it's silly for them not to utilize the fact that information flows so freely in today's market. Anyway, I, I don't want to keep going down that path, but it feels to me like this never got a chance. The Blackfire never got a chance. So if you are interested in this, you have probably only a couple of months to pick one up before they are probably out of stock almost everywhere. And because the Klein, had, the Klein Electrician's Tool was discontinued even earlier, there is nothing else like this one. Um, so definitely consider it. There's even a chance that I might pick up a second one just so that I can modify another uh, Leatherman frame combination with this plier head because I think the plier head is just that cool and that good. But anyway, I just thought you guys should know. So I will put links to where you can purchase these in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in and we'll talk again soon.